Hi Blood Talk fans, it has been a while since I made a video about water mist. Today we'll do practice test questions together. I'll go over each one in detail. Leave me a star for each correct answer and fire for each incorrect answer. If you like this type of video, please let me know. Without further, let's get into it. Question 1. What is a common practice when collecting blood samples from 3 months old? Finger stick, scrap stick, heel stick, or venom puncture? The answer is heel stick. Let's look at the pros and cons for each method and the appropriate time for the use of each method. A finger stick. This method is usually used on a patient's two years and older. We use this method when we cannot find veins if the patient has burned, scarred, or non-intact skin. Pros, easily accessible, generally less callous, even as an adult. Cons, it hurts. The tip of our finger have a lot of nerves ending. Those nerves at your finger deliver messages to your brain when you touch something. We move our fingers if the things we touch is too hot or too cold. So when our fingertip is damaged, it feels like it hurts a lot. When is it appropriate to use this method? When you need to collect a small amount of blood for testing. For instance, when we collect blood tests for hematocrits, when determining donor eligibility for blood donations, or glucose testing using handheld device like glucometer. Scap stick. I'm not sure what this method is. If you know, please tell me about it in the description box below. Heel stick. This method is usually reserved for infants and baby less than 1 to 2 years old. When the patient starts to walk, the skin on the feet starts to thicken and that make it harder to obtain blood using this method. Pros. Larger area for bottomless to work with. The fingertips for the patient in this age group are so small and make it harder to obtain blood. A common test that we usually collect using this method is the bleed lubin test. Cons. The baby kick harder than you think. The little bundle of joy pack a lot of punch. So brace yourselves before you start the procedures. Make sure you ask the nurse to bind the baby before you draw, prevent them from moving and kicking, and that also help comfort the patients and it's avoid the injury of the patients and yourself. Venom puncture. You will use this method the majority of the time. Pros, able to collect a large volume of blood and easily accessible. Cons. We could miss if the patient vein rolls, collapse, complications like hematoma could happen with this method. Question number two. When performing venum puncture on a patient with small, fragile wings, the best solution is to use A. Wings infusion set with a syringe. B. Winged infusion set with evacuated tube. C. Smaller size needles with evacuated tube. D. Standard needle with evacuated tube. The answer is A. A winged infusion set with a syringe. The wing infusion set is more commonly known by the trademark as butterfly. So don't let the word Wing infusion set confuse you. It is a butterfly, but some company cannot call it a butterfly because it's a trademark. There are two parts to this question. It asks you for the size of the needles and which type of tube to use with the needle you selected. For patients with small and fractal wings like elderly or peat patients, the wing infusion set is usually the way to go. The syringe allows the phlebotomist to gently draw the blood. 
The parotomus is the one in control on how fast to withdraw the blood. The parotomus does not know how fast the blood flows into the tube when using evacuated tube. The vein could collapse when it's too much pressure removing blood at once. So that's why the syringe is a better choice for smalls and fragile vein. Question number three. How many inversions are needed to mix the blood with the additive when using the micro container? Four to six times, six to eight times, eight to ten times, or twelve or more? The answer is eight to ten times. The requirement is inverting the microcontainers eight to ten times after blood draw to ensure the anticoagulants is well mixed with the specimen to prevent clot formation. Question number four. The maximum length of time a tourniquet should be left in place is one minute, two minutes, three minutes, or four minutes? The answer is one minute. The maximum length of time a tourniquet should be left in place is one minute to prevent hemoconcentrations and blood infiltrations into the tissues. The tourniquet should not remain in place for longer than one minute before beginning a venum puncture. The tourniquet is usually released as soon as blood begins to flow into the tubes. However, if several tubes of blood must be collected, the tourniquet is usually left in place until blood begins to flow into the last tube. Leaving the tourniquet in place for extended period of time may alter the results of protein-based components as well as red blood cell volumes. So that's why usually when seasoned phlebotomists start the procedures from start to finish, it'll just take minutes. They'll have to move very fast. Question number five, which top tube color contains sodium citrate? Gray, lavender, green, or light blue? The answer is D, light blue. This question should be an easy one. How about another color? What anticoagulants are in those containers? Gray. The anticoagulant in gray top tube is potassium oxalate. Besides the anticoagulants, the gray top tube also has a preservative called sodium fluoride, which helps preserve glucose. Sodium fluoride is a preservative that prevents the breakdown of glucose. It will help preserve the integrity of glucose in the samples for three days. Lavender. The additive in lavender is potassium EDTA. Green. The additive that is in the light green and the dark green are different, so be careful. The additive in the light green tube is lithium heparin. Usually this one will have a gel separator. The additive in the dark green tube is sodium heparin, and this one doesn't have a gel separator. That's all I have for today. What do you think? Are these too easy or too hard? Do you find this explanation helpful? Leave me a star for each correct answer and fire for each incorrect answer. And don't forget to smile. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. That's all I have for today. Did I miss anything? If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. If I don't know, I will try my best to find out for you. Also, keep in mind that the information I put together here is the general practice at the moment. As time change, certain practice may change and different institutions may have different policies. So please keep an eye out for that. If you like my video and think it's helpful in any way, please share it with your friends and I shall see you all next time. As always, remember, your blood tell you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.